Matt, you know, when Ben says that you had a bit of a premonition that the theme of this year was going to be adversity. And, and again, last year, you guys ran the table in the playoffs, um, which which is certainly unique. You know, coaches are supposed to con- control what they can control. Um, you can't control when adversity is going to strike. How did you kind of approach that? Um, obviously, you don't want to, I guess, come in and, and say, hey, guys, this is going to happen. You know, we still need to focus on being on in the moment. Um, but how do you sort of prepare a team for something you might see coming down the road to ensure that they're equipped to handle it? Um, it's a great question. And there's a, there's a fun story behind it. And uh, so we, we've been sitting there. We know like our group. fun stories. Yeah. We, we know our group really well. So that's the first thing we we have a very competitive group of hockey players. You know, it's not a group that you have to like ramp up every day. It's a group that we have to keep calm and under control. Uh, and, and so that's, that's kind of the starting point is knowing who's in the locker room. And uh, then also, like you mentioned, playoffs the year before, um, you know, when you win, when you win 12 and you don't lose any, you know, it sort of sets up like, okay, it, it might not go exactly like it did the year before. So we, we got an invitation through Red Bull. Um, we flew on a, on a DC six plane uh, from the hangar seven here in Salzburg. Uh, we flew on this really neat plane, 1960s or something like that, like a yeah. uh, prop plane that took us to the Red Bull racing. No ring. kidding. And yeah, so cool. And they took us to the Red Bull racing ring and we watched some, uh, Moto GP as a team. It was like our team building event. It was a, it was a big like Red Bull reach out to like celebrate winning the championship the year before and it's set up for an amazing day and so when, when we're in training camp from a coaching perspective i'm always got my eyes open you know for that theme to grab onto you know something that we all experience together that we can wrap up into a package and move forward with and it's it's best if it's all together and we're experiencing it so i've got my eyes around i'm watching and i'm you know trying to figure out you know where is that inspiration going to come from so we're flying on this dc6 and and it's it's an older plane. I mean, like, like significantly older. And with the propeller plane, like it flies like almost sideways. Like it, it feels, it feels very strange when you're up there. And we, they took us right up into the mountains, and we're we're going up and down. And the turbulence starts, and the guys, the guys were all gathered around together, like having like a social hour. And then all of a sudden, the turbulence hits, and like everybody like gets low, and they start like inching their ways back to their seat. And then everybody sat down and they, they buckled up their seatbelt. And there's like, there's some guys reaching for vomit bags. There's like guys like uh, looking for like a, a little bit of medicine that might settle down their stomach. I mean, like it's, we're kind of in that, in that way with the plane. Of course we land and we land safely. And, you know, as, as the course of the, uh, the day went on, I just like, I was like, okay, there it is. Buckle up. That's going to be our, our theme for the season. So our team manager got us an airplane seatbelt. Uh, we hung that on our way out of the uh, locker room each day. It's as like the, the tap reminder about where That's we awesome. are. And uh, we, we created this theme yeah. about buckling up. And it's like when, when things go wrong, you need something to turn to. When things go wrong, you need a place that you can go where you feel safe. And when things go wrong, once you're in that place that you know you're okay, uh, you also have to have some trust in the pilots and in the plane that, that they can get it there. And you can take that as whatever metaphor you want. It, to me, that the pilot part is more about like trusting our process and, our, and what we do together because we know it works. Uh, and we know that there's going to be some turbulence. And we, we got guys ready for that early. And then we played this year about 60 games uh which it it ended up being about i don't know 85 percent of all of our games that ended with the goalie out or or tie and so it was like we all we did was play close games and and all we did was uh battle through injuries and short lineup until the playoffs that was the first time that was the healthiest we were as a team was game one of the playoffs and uh this was all built in reinforced, talked about on a weekly basis, for sure, uh, that we, we were preparing for game seven, being down a goal with eight minutes left to be okay. 
and knew, know that we were there. So to go back to your question before, what are you saying in between periods then? We're talking about the same stuff that we talked about in training camp. It's the same thing. It's the same theme that we developed Buckle up. together over, over the, that's what we said to the guys. We're buckled up. We know how to do this. You know, we're, we're ready. And, uh, you know, the guy, then the guys take it, they buy in and, and they get the job done. So that, it was fun. It, that was, it was really fun to see how that came out. It, it feels like a story for us. I love it. You also just described like my worst possible lived experience, like being on a plane with the turbulence and moving sideways. Um, you, you know what? So on that note of, of, of how kind of the season played out and, and, and either one of you or, or both of you uh, take a stab at this, but looking at the statistics, I thought this was interesting. Um, despite the injuries, uh, you know, despite the adversity you face, you lead the league in goals against is that perhaps a byproduct of, of, of whether you're, you know, tactically preparing um, for what you, you're anticipating um, being a, a, you know, um, a, a tough season? Or is that when you're kind of in the moment, you're like, hey, like, we're going to have to get really good in this area to kind of navigate these these choppy waters. And, and that starts in our own zone. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll start. Um yeah, I think uh, from the day, from the get go, our, our systems, uh, defensive systems anyway, were clearly laid out. Uh, we wanted to be hard to play against. Uh, we had certain principles. There, there wasn't a lot of um, gray areas. It was mostly black and white. This is how we play. And these are the rules and these are the areas of coverage. And uh, so that was clearly laid out. Um, we also probably at some point recognized that we weren't going to be the most offensive team in the league. Uh, I think we only had two import forwards um, for most of the year. Um, we have obviously some good Austrian players, but I would describe them more as, as horses, you know, as opposed to high skill level players. They were really fit, sure. really strong, really physical, extremely hardworking, extremely competitive, extremely hard to play against. But, you know, we weren't going to finesse too many teams. We weren't the highest scoring team. I think we were, you know, top five maybe, but um, we kind of knew that we weren't going to outscore a lot of teams, uh, we were going to have to play with tough defense and, and, and be really tight in our D zone. Of course, we also had very, very good goaltending, <laughs> which uh, which helped a lot and, and a good penalty kill. So, um, yeah, allowing goals. Um, yeah, I think we had the, the best goals against uh, per game in the league and and um, quite high in, in Europe overall as well. But, yeah, it was um, – we, we needed to play that way. We needed to have that uh, that system because we knew we weren't going to be a really highly offensive team. So it uh, got better and better throughout the year. We also have the, had the right mix of guys. We had some guys that just owned that role, some defensemen that blocked shots and some forwards too that blocked a lot of shots and just, just own being a good defensive team. So a bit of everything, but um, yeah, we needed it. Nice. And, and Coop, I mean, you your career – um, has put you in some really big moments. Um, and, there, and you just experienced a lot of those big moments. Like if you were to write a, a checklist that we could hand out to, to every coach out there to say, hey, if you're going into a big game, you better have a plan for these situations or anticipate these things and know how you're going to respond to it if you're going to be successful. What does that checklist look like? Um, well, I'll, I'll tell a story from... Um, one of these moments I was lucky enough to witness along the way. It was 2010 World Juniors, and we were uh, Team Canada was in the hotel. It was in the year in Saskatoon, right before the 2010 Olympics. Um, and uh, okay. we had the team all there, and it was like uh, you know, Jordan Eberle's on the team, and uh, Braden Shen, and those kinds of guys. And and uh, I remember, so we had Mark Messier visit the team and speak to the team. I remember Jordan Everly put up his hand. It was like a Q and A with Mark Messi about winning, you know, uh, or about it, you know, Team Canada and all that sort of stuff. And um, Jordan Everly raised his hand and said, "What's the most important thing in winning?" <laughs> and that was a pretty broad question. And I remember Mark Messi just simply stating, he just said two words. He said, "Composure and execution." And uh, you know, execution is pretty straightforward. It means you need to execute plays. You need to execute your systems, execute the plan, but then you need composure. You need to stay calm in big moments. You you can't, um, you know, lose your temper, um, get rattled by getting scored on, referees, cheap shots, things not going your way. Um, I didn't really know what composure meant at that time. You know, kind of knew the word, but 
uh, ever since then, I just kind of leaned into that and, and, and so was Matt and uh, that became a, a big, we probably said that word more than any other word throughout this entire year, I would say. Would you agree with that? Composure, that became a big theme, especially with a highly competitive group. As Matt said, our team was very, very high, like they get rattled easily if things aren't going our way. They're just hot. They run hot. So we needed that, that, uh, that yeah. theme. So those two things, composure and execution, talked about it a lot. And, and in the end, uh, that's what our guys did. Matt, what is what are the keys to winning? If somebody if, if somebody asked you that same question, what are the keys to winning? And and, and you know, without boring what uh, you know what Mark Messier's advice, what would you, what would your advice be, or what might you share with your group next year based on what you've learned uh, these past couple of years? Um, I heard this from a great coach in a different sport, but if you don't get the locker room right, the big moments won't happen when you need them. And I believe in that yeah. with, with my whole heart is that that's, that's where it, that's where it starts is making sure we call it our brotherhood, but that there's, that there's real unity in the locker room. So that's, that's like, gets your foot in the door. And from there, um, it, it's understanding your jobs in specific moments in games and being able to focus on your job in that specific moment in the game, because there, there's, you know, hundreds of meetings that happen through the season. There's hundreds of practices and all of those are um, cr creating a pinnacle in that big moment that you're describing. And all of those yeah. practices, meetings, um, you know, all of the talk ha has been gearing you to be ready for that moment. And so, as long as as long as that is in place and your team knows what to do then it's just a matter of knowing what is my job right now and and they they're able to execute it together um and then i think from there it's you know that the guys have enough space in the game to also be themselves because as coaches we have a tendency to try to control everything and uh, we have to be very careful about finding that line between we, we know what ingredients will go into winning, uh, how, how disciplined we have to be on entries, how great we have to be at, at boxing out, how important the net front battle is, uh, how disciplined we need to be. We, we know about all this and we drill it into our teams, but there also needs to be enough space for the guys to be able to go and um, play with the skill set and creativity that they have. And uh, I think there's a, it's a long-winded answer because it's a difficult answer, um, but I think that there's some blend between unity, uh, some blend between very strong team game, and some blend between embracing the individuality within the team. If you are involved with the Minor Hockey Association that hosts tournaments or multiple tournaments, or you're a coach who operates spring tournaments, or any organization that puts on events, then you're going to thank me for introducing you to Event Connect. Event Connect makes managing and growing your sports events simple and efficient. It literally covers every aspect of the event management from scheduling, uh, linking out of town teams or visitors with hotel bookings to capturing registration fees and collecting additional revenue all on one platform. Best of all, it's free. Event Connect receives a small fee through its payment processor, but there is no upfront investment. I got introduced to Event Connect because several of our league and association partners began using them and raved about the time it saved, how user friendly it was, and the additional revenue they were able to generate. In fact, the feedback was so positive, we began using Event Connect to host TCS Live, our annual coaching conference at the University of Michigan. It was a great decision. I know firsthand how stressful it can be to run tournaments and events and can't imagine going through that process again without Event Connect. If you want to simplify the process of organizing your tournament or event and tap into new revenue, then go to eventconnectsports.com to book a demo today. Don't go through the painful process of trying to run your next tournament without Event Connect. Go to eventconnectsports.com and get started now.